And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So I want to talk about finishing the race. Uh, when I was younger, I was walking around my living room and the Olympics were on in the background. It's because the way TV was back then and because it was all around the world, it's something you just did. You just kept it on the background and it was on all day for like a days. So I uh, heard a hush over a crowd. I heard announcers be acting perplexed, confused, um, not understand. They uh, definitely didn't understand what they were watching they could tell by the way this uh, man this swimmer had broke the water that something was wrong and they kind of went quiet some people laughed and, and they're very gracious right now to him with the flashback you know clips but it was live and uh, i walked over in that silence of that crowd who was always cheering but this time they weren't cheering and you could see he was cramping up in the legs and he was tired I didn't realize how long those pulls were until I watched, you know, him do that. I realized, well, those, those pulls are actually really long. He was getting tired very easily. Now, at this time, he was the slowest uh, Olympic swimmer uh, to have been on the world stage. I've heard that he's, you know, actually re, um, he's retimed himself or he has a new record. Uh, I don't know what you call that, but he has a new record now because, uh, of course, uh, this moment probably wasn't for him inspirational um, but for me it was it was a very inspirational moment in that quiet in that place when people couldn't decide what to think I knew exactly what I was watching I was watching a man whose will whose will brought him to this place on the world stage he did not they found out later didn't have access to an Olympic sized pool this was the first time he had ever been in an Olympic sized pool live on TV this was the first time and he also was trained by local fishermen at the beach so he inspired me. This was, I was sitting on that couch watching this man struggle, and then finally the crowd wanted him to finish, so they started cheering. When he came out of the water, he thought he had won. That's how amazing the crowd was to him. Um, somebody walked over and whispered something in his ear, and I could see all his joy be drained out of him, and I could see disappointment. It made me sad because I was inspired. I, I Now he's very inspirational because it's all, you know, hide and sight's 2020, but um, for everybody else, for me, I, I knew what I was watching, and I was a high school dropout, and my grandparents were coming up to pick me up to bring me to the South so that they could help me earn my GED so there's some hope for my future, and I graduated, thanks be to God, and thanks to the support that my family, my whole family gave me, I graduated months, six months before my, my high school class did, so God is good. Like, um, even when we feel like we can't finish the race, you know, he's our greatest cheerleader. And the first will be last and the last will be first. And um, when you feel discouraged, when you feel down, you got to remember just, you know, holding on and, you know, white knuckling it and depending not upon your own strength, but upon Jesus' strength. That's something that I've learned through that. I also was taught recently through the Holy Spirit and my being kind of sad in the spirit because I don't know, maybe I'm selfish. Um, I think we all kind of are, you know, we're always reflecting upon ourselves in some level. Um, I was walking with groceries up to the third floor and uh, something had landed on the front of my glasses and I took a long time to process what exactly it could be, even though I could see exactly what it was. It flew to the front of my glasses. And I was just in my heart saying to God, you know, I'm realizing as an ESL teacher, because my kid is very fast, you know, my kid can think very quickly and on her feet and she's very smart. And I realized I have input output issues. I have, um, you know, dyslexia. I have a hard time taking what my brain says, you know, when you feel like you have something on the tip of your tongue. If I, I can read something and have it perfect in my brain and my tongue will not say it. My tongue will not let, I can't wrap my mouth around what I'm saying and so it's kind of you know in my you know heart about that you know and as I was processing once again I have to see everything from the ground up I can't just take what I see and take it as it is at face value I had to see it from all angles so I put my groceries down and the dirty uh, grass and I took off my glasses and I looked on the other side and it was a ladybug and now my family for us, that's symbolic of fortune. That's symbolic of, you know, luck. 
And I realized something, what God was saying to me, because in my heart I was saying, I have a design flaw. And when I saw that lady book, I felt in my spirit, God say, I don't make mistakes. I don't, it's a design and it's, it's without flaw. He doesn't make mistakes. And so I realized that God uses all of us, you know, regardless of how much nurture and nature has in, in interfered with, you know, God's plan or, you know, we always think, well, maybe I'm at the right, wrong place or I did the wrong thing or you're always what if, what if, what if. But God's made it clear that he will finish the work that he started in us, regardless of what this world is doing to us. You know, family members dying, feeling ill, feeling tired, feeling like you can't complete the race. He will work all things for our good because that's his promise. And if ever you forget that in prayer, if you feel like on some level that's not being met, just say it back. Say, God, you promised that you would finish what you started in me. And I have faith in that. And in saying it back, you're reinforcing that you not only know, but you know that that's exactly what God would say back to you, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. It reminds you of Bible verses. When you're down, it reminds you, you have, it is written, just like what, what Jesus said to Satan, for it is written, it is written. That was what his response was to doubt. That's what his response was to somebody testing what God had said to him. That's what his response was. It is written. So this is one of Christ is King forever. It is written. The first will be last and the last will be first. May God be with you.